Welcome back, and in this lesson, we're going to be going over big decimal and big integer. Now, previously, when we talked about numbers, we talked about how you can store them in a variety of primitive data types, the byte, short, int, long, float, and double. You'll recall that each of these had a space allotted to their storage. The byte had one byte, as the name would suggest, the short had two bytes, the int four bytes, the long eight bytes, the float also had four bytes, and the double had eight. Now the big thing to note here was that when we were creating these, we talked about how, as a result of their limitations in storage, because of the way Java stores numbers, they're stored in binary, and because you only have a certain amount of space, you can only go up to a certain big, uh, a certain decimal value. For example, if we had to count up to, let's say, 75 quintillion, then you couldn't store that because we wouldn't have a data type big enough. While this might seem like an edge case, you'll say, well, how, when, how often do I need to really store a number bigger than a long or than a double? It's surprisingly common. The big advantage of the big integer and big decimal classes are that you can use them whenever you need to have a very large or an arbitrary range, whenever you need to have an arbitrary precision, that is more than the 15 digits uh, that are allotted by doubles and more than the zero significant digits that are going to be allotted by integers and other uh, integer types, or when you need to represent decimal numbers precisely. Now, these big numbers and this uh, very strict precision becomes most useful when you have to try to figure out some cryptographic algorithms. There's a very common algorithm uh, of, that we use to uh, make something encrypted called RSA encryption. That type of encryption uses asymmetric mathematics where you have to figure out a very large prime number, usually more than 15 or 20 digits long. A normal long can't store that, so we have to use the big integer and big decimal. The example of the precision of decimals, though, is much easier to demonstrate. Let's say I have a number, and we want to make this the double d2 is equal to 0.1. Then we say d2 uh, is equal to, and sorry, that should be uh, the double 0 0.1. And after that, we would say d2 is equal to d2 times 3. And then, if we wanted to print out d2, we'd use a simple system to out dot print line. So we say system to out dot print line d2. So if you look at this, you'll notice that even though 0.1 times 3 is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, if you print that out, should just be 0.3. But when you print it out, you get a very weird answer. You get 0.3000000004. Now, why is this? This is because of the way that Java has to store numbers. Remember, fundamentally, all numbers must be stored in uh, binary. Now, with some numbers, that's very easy, like 2 or 6. You can easily store those in binary. But it becomes very difficult once you start to deal with floating point values. The example of this, point 0.1 can't be stored in a floating point value very easily. So point 0.1 is stored as an approximation. It's stored with point 0.1, point 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Then, when you multiply that by 3, you start to run into trouble because it's going to add that up, which means that it won't scale cleanly, and as a result, you're going to get a weird little answer with precision. This has actually happened more than a couple of times, but we haven't cared because our degree of precision needed was usually only up to, let's say, the 10,000th or even the 100,000th place. But there's some applications where this little amount of information could be crucial. So we have the big integer and big decimal classes. Now the big thing to note is that these classes are actually going to be stored inside of the math class. We talked about previously how the math class, unlike every other class, doesn't need to be imported because it already exists. It's already imported by default. But when you're dealing with objects of the math class and the big integer and big decimals are subclasses or they inherit and they work off of the math class, then you need to make sure you actually import the math class itself. So you have to, you can leave the space for it right now. And if you were to say big integer, let's say b1, or we'll call it big1, is equal to new big integer, and then let's say we just put in 15 as a burner value, you'll notice you have an error resolving, so we have to import it in from the java.math package, which we can simply say java.math.biginteger. Now we're going to replace this a little bit, we're going to change this into the wildcard import, because as you'll see, we need to work from the big integer and big decimal.
So let's break down what this does. It says make a new big integer of 15. So why do we have to make 15 a string? The way this works on the back end is it takes the string 15 and tries to convert it into an integer value. Now if it's multiple integers, as many times if you have a massive number, because the advantage of the big integer class is that it has no limitation. A big integer number can be uh, infinitely big. There is no limitation. Even with integers and longs, we said they were very large, but they had a limitation. Big integers and big decimals do not. So in this case, if you had a number that was, let's say, way bigger than 15, let's say it's 20 digits long, then it couldn't be stored inside of a single integer or a long, so it breaks it up, and then it'll recombine them later on. It extracts the value, then it assigns that to one of the local types, like a uh, integer or a long, depending on the situation. Then it combines them and forms them into a big integer. Now you might be looking at this and saying, well, what's the point of big integer? Why do I use 15 here? So if we substitute this with the number where big integer is necessary, let's say uh, you can put in any string of numbers, so we'll just you know, hit the numeric keys a couple of times. You'll notice there's no limitation. We can keep going for as long as we want. And if you try to do the same thing with a long, which is the longest integer storage method, we could say long L2 is equal to uh, the value right here. If you copy that in, you'll notice that we're going to get an error because, and if you mouse over, you can see this, it says this is completely out of range, as it should be. So we have to store this in a big integer. Now, what's the point of the big integer class other than storing big numbers? Because if all I need is the number, I can actually use a normal string. I don't need a big integer. I don't need to create another class, take that performance penalty. I can use my normal method. But the big integer class is related to numbers only, unlike strings, which are for everything. Which means that we have a couple of methods that are useful. We can say, for example, that we want to create a new big integer object. We'll call it big2. And we say that's equal to big1 dot multiply with big1. So what does this do? It simply says, well, we take big1, this massive number, then we uh, take big1 and multiply it by itself. So we're in theory just squaring the number. So the point of this is supposed to be that we take one of these numbers, square it, and we get a massive number. But because we're dealing with big integers, this isn't a problem. There's no limitation on the range, which means we can make it as big as we want. And because it's an integer class, and it's based off of math and not just any old random string, we can do mathematical operations. For example, we can say that big2 is equal to big2.add plus big1. So what does this do? It does normal addition. It just happens to be with truly mind-bogglingly big numbers. And if we created uh, a new value, big integer 3, and we said that was going to be equal to the uh, big 2 dot subtract, and then uh, we provided in the value of uh, big 1, then we'll come back to the original value. Now the advantage, again, is going to be that we have perfect precision here. Even though it's uh, a functionally infinite number of digits long, it's going to be added perfectly, as though you had taken it with a piece of paper and you'd done it as exactly as you would like. Now you might be saying, well, how do I output a simple big integer? Can I say system.out.println big3? Now if we run our program, you'll be able to see that you actually can, because all this will do is it calls the toString method. It converts the big integer, uh, big3, into a string, and then outputs that. And you can see how large this number is. It's 20, 30, 40 characters long, and yet we have perfect precision on it. Now, there's one disadvantage of using a big integer. Now, many times people say, well, can't, uh, can I create a big integer? Uh, let's say we call it, want to call this one big4. And we say it's going to be equal to a new big integer with the value of 42, for example, just to pick a random value. This is a common mistake. Even though 42 is simply a normal number, we have to convert it into a string first. The big integer class has to work with the string. Even though it seems a little bit illogical, it's because of how it works in the back end. If you want to use it properly, you have to make sure you convert your item to a string first. In addition, 
people often wonder if there's a multiply, uh, if there's a division method. There is a division method. We can say big four is equal to big three dot divide. And you'll notice there's a couple of division methods here. One of them is going to be the divide and remainder, which basically combines the modulo and the division. So it'll return a big integer array with one of the values being the actual div divided value and the other being the uh, remainder value. And the normal divide is simple division. Now this division is going to be division not like normal integer division. This is going to be like mathematical division. So when we say uh, we have let's say 15 and 3, it'll return 5. But if you were to say let's say 20 divided by 3, you're still going to get an integer result unless you assign it to a big decimal, in which case you'll get a decimal result. So speaking of big decimals, let's get started with those two. We can say we want to create a big decimal. And then we say, let's say we want to call this uh, deck one, and that'll be equal to a new big decimal. And then just like with the big integers, you have to provide the value. So in our case, let's say we want to say 45 point and then another random string of values. So in this case, we again will get perfect precision. Even if it's a million lines long, a million characters long, we can keep on putting in as many keys and as many numbers as you'd like, you'll still have perfect precision. This is the point. The big decimal will never cut off your values, and it'll never give you such a weird result. If you were to say that we want to create a new big decimal, and let's say we want to call this one deck2 is equal to new big decimal with the string of, let's say, 0 0.1, then we wanted to say that deck2 would be equal to deck2.multiply by and then we have to provide our multiple, uh, the value we're multiplying by. The other thing to note is that when we are doing multiplication with big integers and big decimals, it has to be of the same data type. So you'll notice that right here, uh, if you wanted to multiply by another value, let's say 15 or even a decimal value, it has to be another big integer. You can't simply multiply by a normal number. It has to first be converted into a big integer or a big decimal. This is the problem. The big integer and big decimal classes are a little bit arbitrary, but as long as you know their rules, it's going to become a lot easier to work. So now we can simply say that we want to put in uh, 3, and we have to say, obviously, that has to be a big decimal. So we say new big decimal with the value of 3, and because we don't care about this value afterwards, we can create it in an anonymous declaration. And now if we were to output deck2 using a system to out.print line, and we say deck2, and what this will do again, we'll simply call the uh, print line, it'll call the toString method on the deck2 object. So if we run our program now, and we obviously would have to get rid of this first so that we don't run into an error, you can see that we get 0.3 as opposed to the 0.3000000004. In addition, the big decimal works off of the most precise value you have. So in this case, we had 0.1 and we had 3. 0.1 is more precise than 3, so it'll go to the tenths place. But if you had 0 0.1000000, it'll instead just add those extraneous zeros to the end of this. Now you might be saying, well, this is all very nice, but what if I need to take the power of a value? This is where big integer and big decimal start to break down. The big integer and big decimal do not do powers. The reason for this, if you were to take the big decimal or a big integer, and a big decimal is really just a big integer where the location of the uh, decimal point is going to be stored. So if you take two big integers, and let's say it's uh, 2 to the 100th power is one of the big integers, and 2 to the 15th power is the other big integer. If I wanted to say that I want to take the first big integer to the power of the second big integer, ideally this should work. But the problem with powers is that they do not scale very linearly. By definition, they scale exponentially in terms of the time it takes to do an operation, which means that if you had to do the 2 to the 100th power, and you had to do that so many times, quintillions, trillions of times, you would very quickly run out of space. So to make sure that you don't run out of physical space on your computer, they don't allow you to use uh, big integers or big decimals being to another power. You can always write your own implementation of this. It would require uh, you to use a loop, and you would have to have another method. But usually, we do not do big decimal and big integer powers because of the clear disadvantage. As the numbers can get so big, 
it's very easy to start to exceed not even the limits of Java, but the limits of your system storage. In addition, the multiplication method provided to us inside the big decimal and big integer classes is fairly efficient, but if you're going to work with numbers above a few thousand digits of length, you would want to implement a different form of the multiplication. The form inside of the big decimal and big integer classes is really just a modification of normal multiplication. The disadvantage of this is that it's going to be very slow after you start to reach a certain value because it doesn't scale linearly. On the other hand, there's other interpretations and other ways of building it that are much faster. We're not going to get into those since most of the time you're not going to be dealing with numbers more than a few hundred digits in length, even if you're dealing with encryption or big integers and big decimals. So if you do deal with a value uh, that large though, make sure you rewrite your implementation of multiplication. Hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. To summarize, in this lesson we talked about the big integer and the big decimal classes. We talked about how they uh, need to work off of a string. They give us perfect precision. They are much more uh, they are much more logical because they can take as many values as we want. They have to work off of strings because of how they're created, so everything has to be a string. And when you multiply, divide, or do any operation, it has to be between two big integers or two big decimals. We also talked about how if you want to rewrite your implementation of multiplication, you should only do so if you're dealing with numbers over a few thousand digits. We talked about how the big decimal is just a version of big integer, where the decimal point is going to be placed in a certain value afterwards. And we talked about how there's no power for big integers and big decimals due to storage and computing limitations. Hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson, and hopefully you'll join us for our next lesson.